perspective view just to make sure that this um, camera is actually, so the spotlight is actually the right um, rotation. Now we can just scale that up if we need to see it a bit better. There we go. And yes, it does look like it's coming from the same general direction. So this one won't actually uh, cast any light. It would just cast photons on a mental ray, emit photons. Let's go into indirect lighting and turn on caustics. And let's just beef that up quite a lot and see what we get. And uh, we do have the caustics in there. Um, if we quickly just set up a render layer, a render pass um, as our indirect lighting, we'll be able to see exactly what that looks like. So file, oops, we can't actually get a render pass because we're rendering IFF. Let's just make this open the XR 32 bits and re-render. New file, oh, we still can't get a render pass. Why is that? That would be because I have not associated the render pass. Okay, so that's what our caustic looks like. That's looking okay, but what would be better is if it was sharper. So if we just come to our light, this is the amount of photons here. I'm gonna add two zeros to that. That might be a bit bright. Let's actually do this on a separate render layer just so that we can see the caustics easier. Um, if I copy this layer, call this caustics, and I'll just actually hide the, uh, the chessboard here. Remove that, uh, Control H is to remove or hide it from on this particular render layer. I'm just gonna apply Lambert 1, uh, set the diffuse to one and the color is uh, neutral gray and I will just go to the render stats of this character and create a layer override for primary visibility he's not going to cast shadows he's not going to be primarily visible we just want the caustics from him so let's take a render Okay, that's quite bright. Uh, we probably have too much caustics going on. If we have a look in the render pass, you can see there are quite a lot of caustics there. Um, well, they do look quite nice. We can play with the intensity in post, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, we can always increase the amount of photons to get sharper caustics, although it does take a lot longer to render. So I think I'll, I'm not sure what number this is, it's probably a million at the moment. It's actually 10 million photons, I think. It's very hard to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, 10 million photons. Um, that should do us. Uh, and now we'll need to split up the render layers uh, for compositing uh, 2D elements inside of Maya. So Let's do that now. So we have the caustics layer. Let's isolate just the um, just the man himself. Uh, we want to have motion blur in this scene, and uh, as you know, it's pretty much impossible to correctly mat um, motion blurred elements unless they're isolated already. So we need to isolate the man. So I'll copy the master layer and call this man. And on this layer, nothing else will be visible. It will just be the man. So turn off primary visibility for the, um, the projection. And I believe it's already off for, oh no, it's not. Turn that off there for the chessboard. And we wanna make sure that we don't have an image plane. It's already set to zero alpha. And we disabled the primary visibility of our image based lighting. So that should be good. So let's see what we get. Now this is taking a long time to render. Uh, that's because of the caustics. So I'm just trying to interrupt it there with escape. We can actually hide the spotlight on this particular layer. 
this layer we do not need caustics and that should render quite a bit faster okay that looks nice just make sure the alpha is also good which it is good uh, so we have the man isolated uh, now I might just want a mat because we don't actually get solid alpha for this so let's just uh, copy this layer and call this matte and basically if we just go to the hyper shade and add in a surface shader and just set this to white we will have a solid alpha here and on this render layer we'll turn off ray tracing because we don't need it Cool. that's good we have our matte layer okay now let's create our shadow layer by copying the master layer called the shadow and uh, what we want to do with this layer is remove the chessboard we only want the shadow catcher and we want the man but we don't want him visible we just want him there casting shadows on the scene now let's uh, go into the render settings we need to do is create a shadow render pass so that we can isolate the shadow and um, be able to have lots of control over the look of it inside of positing. So let's associate the shadow and we don't need the indirect uh, pass on this layer. Let's also go into the features and turn off caustics and final gather because we need neither of those and they will just make the render take longer. So let's uh, render this and see what we get. Uh, also, if you have caustics turned on, you won't get these nice uh, colors in your shadow. So keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at our render pass. And this is what we get. The shadow is down there. That's exactly what we want. Um, but there is a slight problem. And the problem is that if we have a look in our hypershade, and in our projector, this projection node is actually slightly inaccurate. Uh, and the method that we're going to be using to composite the shadow uh, render layer requires 100% accuracy. So this projection node isn't going to work for us. So what we need to do is swap this out for the uh, camera map uh, node, which is actually hidden by default inside of Maya. So what you'll need to do, if you haven't exposed the uh, Mental Images production shaders, is just type this into your mail window. I'll just uh, put this up. So pause the video, uh, write this down, and then type it into mail. Once you've done that, hit enter and restart Maya, and that will give you access to the Mental Images produ production shaders. And we're gonna be using the MIP camera map, which is just a better way to project textures from uh, the camera. So I'll delete this uh, projection node here. And uh, what we want to do is drag this. We don't want to drag it into the map. If we do that, you'll notice it's taking the file three dot message to the camera map. We don't want that. We want to go other and we want to take the out color to the map, not the message. You'll get problems if you uh, don't do it this way. So that's good. And in the projector, let's link this back up. And uh, then let's uh, just compare the old uh, image that we rendered and re-render. And you'll see a slight difference uh, it's pretty much impossible to tell which one is right, but I can just tell you right now that the MIP camera map is correct and this slightly uh, different uh, pro normal camera projection node is uh, incorrect and you can see uh, the difference there. Okay, so now with the uh, correct uh, method of projecting our texture, the shadow layer is good to go. Now let's set up uh, render passes for the other layers. Um, we have the shadow on the shadow layer. We have indirect to get the caustics, which is correct. In the man, uh, we will want to have, um, we will want 
object normal in camera and world space and these will let us um, refract any images or 2D cards or 2D elements behind uh, this object uh, because the normals tell you which way the geometry is facing uh, we can use that as a map to refract so let's associate those actually no let's continue adding more um, let's add in a refraction reflection and refraction and specular that should be all the ones we need for this guy and the reason I'm just uh, doing a normal camera and a normal world as well is because I just like to uh, compare which one looks better inside of compositing as opposed to just being limited to one okay so that's the um, man setup the mat obviously doesn't need any render passes so that's that set up now let's um, we don't need to render the master layer so turn that off that won't render anymore which is good but one thing we want to do is turn on motion blur and we're going to do that on the master layer so let's go to quality and crank the quality up to 2 set it to gorse if it's not already and turn motion blur to full now we don't actually need that on the shadow so I'm just going to create a layer override and turn it off just so it renders quicker um, we really won't notice and on the caustics I will also turn off motion blur and if we haven't done so already turn off final gather on the caustics uh, because that will actually muddy up our caustics we want our caustics just on their own and if you have final gather uh, that's another form of indirect lighting so they'll both be chucked into the same render pass so you just want um, you don't want any final gather on your caustics layer and uh, on the man of course we want uh, motion blur because he's our mat sorry he's not our mat uh, but he is he's the glass man we want motion blur on him and the mat those are the only two that we need motion blur on and apart from that we'll just set up um, we've got, let's just set up our naming convention. Currently, this is calling, this is putting it in the images folder, creating a, a new folder based on the render layer, which is nice, but it's calling it the scene name, which is not nice. So if we insert the layer name, it'll uh, label it as the, the render layer that it is. But we also want to include a folder. We don't want all these render layers just chucked in here there'll be hundreds and hundreds of images so I put a slash to make a folder and then another render layer token so inside of images folder we'll have a folder that is titled the render layer and then the name of the render layer .exr and we want uh, zip compression for compositing inside of nuke we want name.number.extension and we want to render from 0 to 167 we want to render from render cam and uh, I'm going to change the resolution. Um, it was 960 by 1103. That's um, the undistorted version of 1080. But I'm just going to change it to 1320 uh, by 742. And that is just to sort of downscale it to 720p um, because otherwise the, the project files will be too big to send to you guys. So with that done, I'll just turn off the uh, default light it's already off great and that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and render that and I hope to see you guys in the uh, AETUTS uh, tutorial the next part of the series uh, compositing all these render passes and 2D elements inside of Nuke